Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it's always very, I can say, very solemn for, you, for me to come to this community. And, of course, we are all the same community. But to come to North London, sometimes I don't feel you know, really qualified. But what I realize is that God doesn't call those who are qualified. He qualified those whom he called. So you can see we are all sometimes not even qualified to be here. But the fact that we are here, and I want you all to feel that you're qualified to be in front of God. Thank you so much. Right, okay. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. Now this phrase, this is the last um, Bible verse in Psalm 23. Uh, when I was asked to give the sermon, my wife was always asking me, what are you going to talk about? But, you know, when you're giving sermon, I don't know about others, but sometimes it can really be difficult to come up with something to say. But for me, what has always helped me is, is not what you say, but it's allowing God to speak through you. So, allowing God to speak through you always is what, when I have to give the sermon, I default myself to. Because sometimes you want to talk about this, you want to talk about that, you have to do the research and all these things. And then, sometimes, you can't even say all that you want to talk about. Or you get confused, you get, because a lot of information. But when you are in the spirit of allowing, then that's totally changes the dynamics. But anyway, when Raymond asked me to give the sermon, um, I said, I'm going to talk about Psalm 23. But I have organized my sermon so that we can, I can, let's say, give a little bit of introduction, but the key part are the last two parts. Speaking into your lives. Now, I want to do it slightly differently today. I want to speak into your lives, our lives, of the goodness and mercy of God that he has for you. Of course, in that Bible verse, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. But I'm saying today that goodness and mercy shall follow you. I mean, already the testimonies we heard were really great. Great testimonies. And we can see, I could see the goodness of God being manifested in some of the messages, in some of the sharings. You know, seeing your idol for the first time. And the right time. Probably the time you wanted to see him wasn't the right time. But if you can take one or two points from that, something will stay with you forever. Those are true manifestations of God's love and mercy. Going, say, going to see those, I can say what? That palace to see true mother. You know, and even the historical perspective, perspective of my brother David's talk. I just thought that in itself was enough for the sermon for today. But I want to speak into your lives the goodness and mercy of God. But to go through this, 
to truly understand Psalm 23, you have to understand the two um, the two psalms, the, the two psalms that come before and the one that comes at the end. Psalm 23, I can say, is like a sandwich. You know, one one of the um, professors of the Bible, the Old Testament particularly, David Parson, he said in his book, Unlocking the Bible, he said, Psalm 22, Psalm 23, and Psalm 24 are like a sandwich. Psalm 23, uh, Psalm 21 is like the top part, you know, the top part of the sandwich. And that part, Psalm 23, it talks about, you know, Christ's coming, how he's going to be. So those three, it talks really about the Messiah. First, Christ is coming as a savior. And, you know, and he's, he's going to sacrifice on the cross. For us, and if you listen to Jesus when he was on the cross, the first the word he said, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" That word was taken from the first verse of Psalm 22, and that whole psalm is like really expressing the suffering and the price Jesus was paying for us. It's quite interesting if you have time when you go home, try to read those three. And David Person, he said that, I mean, he grouped the Bible, especially the Psalms. He said those three verses are very prophetic of the Messiah. He will come, he will suffer, and you know, Jesus knew the Bible and that's what he said. And it's been written long before him, but he said that. Why have you forsaken me? And we all know because of the fall, human soul completely got, you know, under the, the what? The burden of evil, of the Satan. Jesus came, even though his mission wasn't accomplished as we all know, but what he achieved was great. So, we go to Psalm 23, and Psalm 23, the mid is like the middle part of the sandwich. You know, it's the middle part of the sandwich. There, Jesus came like, you know, David calls this as the crook. But now, from the suffering, he's a shepherd. He's the shepherd. But even before them, the prophets, like Prophet Ezekiel, Prophet Isaiah, they talk to the children of God as the sheep and God being the shepherd, caring for them. So this part is so lovely. It's like, okay, now I'm going to care for you. I'm going to protect you, you know. And the whole verse, Psalm 23, is so important. In fact, there's a whole hymn on it. There's a whole hymn on, on this uh, uh, particular chapter. But what I want to bring on to you in that chapter is the last verse, verse 6. Goodness, surely. And then now, if they said surely, 
then there's really no doubt. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you. Now, when I say you, it's not just you as an individual. It's your family, your lineage, your descendants. And that is what I'm going to speak into you today. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. But we will get to that. Let me finish with the, the, the introductory bit. Then, obviously, we come to, um, you know, the first verse of that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. You know, it would take me a whole two, three sermons to talk about this. But we will leave it to another time. Let's get to the point. From, from this chapter onwards, now, the Messiah will come to really guide and lead us. And not only that, this particular you know, this particular verse in the Bible expresses God's concern and care for all of us and all that he is doing, all that he will do to make sure that we receive his goodness and mercy. Then we come to Psalm 24. Now, Psalm 24 is like the other part of the sandwich, yeah? The bottom bit. And this time, now, is the kingship, is the sovereign, is the crown. That the Messiah is not the king, the sovereign, the crown. And at this time, where we don't just have to be sheep and other things, we also have to partake into this crownship, into this, uh, what, ownership. This is the time now, that, you know, it, the Bible is saying that God owns the whole earth. Everything in it, he owns it. And if he owns everything, you know, he's there and he wants to give all these to you. The earth is the Lord's. Everything in it, the world, all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. So this is just a quick encapsulation of this Bible verse. These three, sandwich, you know, I know somebody who loves sandwich, you know, and I'm sure we all love it. The middle bit usually. And in that middle bit, I've taken one nugget out of it and I want to plant it into your life today and forevermore. Okay. Now, I want to speak the words of this Bible verse in your life. So I'm going to do it slightly differently. How am I going to do that? I'm going to speak it. And I want you all to be here. To be in this room. And to be present. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to, as I read it, as I speak it, as I say it, let it be so in your lives. And all those who are watching, all those online who are watching, you're also there. Wherever you are, be present, be in this room, be where you are. It's still going to be something strange. Maybe the next part will be, but this time... I am going to read this Bible verse. And as you hear it, let it be so in your life and lineage. Are you? 
I'm going to need something better than that. <laughs> I'm going to need something better than that because what I am doing today, this is the inspiration I had, is to speak into your lives that surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you. So sometimes God's goodness is all around us. Abundance is all around us. But sometimes we don't truly receive it. Sometimes we block God's goodness from flowing into our lives. Either maybe because of our conditioning or even sometimes because of the teachings we receive. But today... I'm taking something really literal. The goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your lives. Okay. Let's go. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Now, this one said, the Lord is your shepherd. You lack nothing. You know, in the Bible, say the Lord is my shepherd. But I am saying that the Lord is your shepherd, and you lack nothing, are you? I need something bigger than that, stronger, to let me feel that you are receiving it. Yeah? It's different. Well, let's embrace difference. I'll say that one more time. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall lack nothing, are you? He makes you lie down in green pastures. Are you? Aye. He leads you beside quiet waters. Are you? Aye. Let it be so in your life and lineage. He refreshes your souls now and forevermore. He guides you along the right paths for his name's sake. Are you? Even though you walk through the darkest valley. You know, sometimes we walk through darkest valleys. And that would mean a lot of different things. Maybe at the point of death. Maybe through sickness. Through many other things. And as I look among the congregation, I can see my brothers who have walked through that darkness of the valley of death. But the goodness and mercy of God is in your life. So even though you walk through the darkest valley, you shall fear no evil for the heavenly parents. Our heavenly parents is always with you. Are you? Our heavenly parents' rod and staff will comfort you. Are you? Are you? Our heavenly parents prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Our heavenly parents prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. You, your family, and lineage. There will always be something that will come against us in our path to follow God. And whatever that may be, our heavenly parents prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Are you? Are you? Our heavenly parent anoints your head with oil and your cup overflows. And let it be so in your lineage, in your life, in your lineage. Your cup overflows. That Whatever that means, let it be. Our heavenly parents anoint your head and your cup overflows. Are you? Okay. Even though you walk through the darkest valley. Now, I've said this. Next one. And this is, the, this is the last one. Surely, surely, 
Our heavenly parents' goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. You might ask, how could that be? I'm suffering. I'm going to I have financial problems. I have a lot of challenges. How is God's goodness and mercy following me? You may not know, but I want to assure you today. I want to assure you, those who are watching, that surely our heavenly parents' goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Are you? Are you? Now, I want to ground you into this world. I want, I want to ground you into this. And I want you to please, yes, let's play them, yes. I want you to be present in this room, wherever your mind is. Come in this room. And I want you to be connected. Really where you are, feel your body in the seat. And just recognize your surrounding in here. And I want you to focus on a particular object. Maybe you can look at me. Just focus. And I want you to be in the observer position. Let's say you observing yourself, maybe looking at me or looking at this object. The way you do that, bring your concentration behind your eyes looking. And I want you to close your eyes at this point. Breathe. Take a deep breath. Out. Feel yourself really comfortable. Feel your weight in your chairs, on your feet. And take a deep breath. Out. We have the goodness of God all around us. And he said he owns the earth and everything that lives on it. Most so, he said he is our shepherd. But what I want you to do now is, as you are sat down, calm, relaxed, focused, and listen to my voice. Take a deep breath. And out. On our next breath, just feel yourself being connected right down into the earth, which represents God's property. And ground yourself like a tree. Breathe. Feel yourself really going deep down, like a tree root going down, or like a laser beam going right to the center of the earth. Breathe out. As you connect to the center of the earth, feel the earth's energy also coming. And it is written that the Lord is your shepherd. 
you will lack nothing. Breathe out. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. out now if there is anything that is blocking God's love from reaching you, your family and lineage whatever it is physically emotionally artistically if there's something happened in your past I want you to channel it right down through your grounding cord into the center of the earth and let it go. Let it be transmuted and transformed. Breathe out. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. I want you to bring your attention rise to your base where you are sat the end of your spine breathe out you know in true father's prayers if you read his prayers he always talk about allowing father allow us Allow us right now, allow the sure goodness and mercy that is yours it's for your family, for your lineage. Allow them to manifest in your life. Breathe out. Whatever emotional challenge you may have, physical challenge, psychic challenge, just let go. Let them go right down into your grounding cord. Feel yourself truly grounded and let God's love, let God's goodness. Let his kindness, let his mercy just overtake you. You're grounding in his love now and forevermore. Breathe out. Now bring your attention to the center of your head is truly being present being in your body and breathe now you can come back to yourselves you can check your feet Check your arms. And when you're ready, after my prayer, you can open your eyes. So join me in your prayer. Dearest Heavenly Parents, this moment, Father, we ground in your grace, in your glory. You said, and it is written, In Psalm 23, verse 6, you said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In your presence, for it is written that where two or more are gathered, you are with them. 
I declare today, right now, to my brothers and sisters, that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy shall follow you, your family, your lineage, from generation to generation. And you, I said you, shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I thank you. I'm grateful to you. And I offer this prayer in our name, Francis and Bridget Foby, a central bless family. If you agree with us, let's say, Arjun. Ah,